Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen Elsonis, and if you're new, welcome. In today's video, I wanted to talk about hair and conformity in the truth. And just before I start, I just wanted to see if you guys notice anything different going on with my hairdo. Oops. It's because I recently cut my hair, and I'll tell you why. So, the reason why I'm making this video was because sometimes I sit and I think about things and I... I ponder on them and I realize how they really affect who we are and really affect how we think and, you know, how we view life, even from, like, being around other people. I just want to start by talking about conformity in the truth and how hair is, has, is like, one of the biggest things for black women in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses, as many would say. So when I was going to the Kingdom Hall, I really remember a lot of sisters would always feel the need to flat iron their hair and um, have straightened hair. Um, even though the religion is very diverse, in most congregations there's really just, you know, in the congregation that I was in, speaking for myself, the congregation, the congregation that I was in was mainly whites and black people, you know, black people made up the majority. Um, but most of those black, most of the, the most of the black people were already mm, uh, much older and already set in their ways and already used to perms and all these other things to make your hair straight. Now um, I remember on one occasion um, because at some point in time I used to wear my hair very natural in its natural state because I went through a period of getting to know get like stopping putting perms and all this other stuff in my hair to relax it and make it straight so I had stopped and I remember a sister came up to me and said that my hair looked wild and unprofessional or um it doesn't look kingdom hall you know it doesn't look like I'm going to the Kingdom Hall. It looks like I'm going to a disco or something like that along that along that line. And I just remember my head saying like, okay, <laughs> this is my hair. This is how Jehovah made me. You know what I mean? Why, why do I have to change my hair for Jehovah to recognize me or to be recognized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses? And so that just stuck with me for a very long time. And I remember... I would always straighten my hair for like conventions or like like really important meetings and whatnot and it really damaged my hair <laughs> in the truth I always felt the need to look like everyone else when I was in the truth I always felt the need to straighten my hair to conform with everyone else who was straightening their hair and to what I felt was proper or professional or I can't think of the word right now um like I'm going to the Kingdom Hall. I just can't, I can't think of the word. But yeah, so that was a, a lot of the mentality for a lot of sisters. And I remember even one sister telling me um, one time, like it was a it was a black sister, and she was like, "Oh, you know that when you go to Bethel, they're not gonna allow you to wear your hair naturally, like the way that I wore it." I'm pretty sure, like. Because Bethel, Bethel Patterson was just maybe 45 minutes away from the Kingdom Hall that I went to. So a lot of Bethelites came over to our congregation. But I remember, I don't remember seeing a lot of Africans, African American sisters wearing their hair natural. They all wore their hair straight. And I was just thinking, I was like, I don't know. But I never, I never confirmed it or whatever. But I was just thinking, like, how shallow would that be, you know, if, if Bethel didn't accept people or women or african-american women who wore their hair naturally it was just it was a lot of people in the truth a lot of sisters in the truth and you know what i mean a lot of people that would tell you to straighten your hair and to conform into what everyone else looked like that was just a very big thing um when i was going to the kingdom hall was hair um my grandmother would my grandma would my grandmother would um flat iron my hair and then she, I remember on one occasion I had worn my hair natural and my grandmother whispered in my ear. She's like, do you want to make me look, cr do you want to, you look crazy or something like that in my ear. And it made me feel so horrible because it's like, I love my hair the way it is. I don't want to change it. And so from all of that, 
heat damage and um, flat ironing. My hair was very damaged. <laughs> my hair was damaged, and it's been that way for a while. And um, it would just look... Even um, before I flat ironed it recently, when it really got damaged, it was it was very unhealthy. I felt like, okay, I want to start over. I want to cut my hair. I want to cut all of this, all of this unhealthy hair off my head, and start over. Like you know, hair grows back. I will have, you know what I mean. Hair comes back. Hair grows back. And I I remember standing there like a, a day or two ago, and I was like. I'm gonna cut my hair. <laughs> I'm gonna cut my hair. I'm gonna do it. Because I've been wanting to do it for so long. But my family's always, no, no, your hair is so pretty and this and that and long and whatnot. But it's just like my hair is not healthy. I'd rather have short, healthy hair than long, unhealthy hair. If that makes sense. But in a black community, like long hair equates beauty and whatnot. And it's, it's just a very, like, hair for black women is a very touchy, sensitive topic. Like, hair is one of the important things to black women because it can make it can make or break a lot of black women. And I'm not saying that as in, like, all black women do is care about their hair or whatever, but hair is something that we have trouble with, I guess, knowing how to take care of it and stuff like that. Um, so I feel like hair is a very touchy subject for a lot of black women. But I cut it off, you know, I feel, I feel iffy towards it. I don't, I don't like it, but I don't not like it. I do like the feeling of waking up and just getting up like this. But every time I go like that, I just touch my little tiny peanut head in the back. Like, I just have a peanut head in the back, you guys. But yeah, so I was just like, I'm going to cut off all my hair and I'm going to grow it back naturally, naturally healthier. Go against everything that... I was taught that I had to do when I was in the truth. Like it might be here. But I just want to add this in. I remember when I first started coming to the Kingdom Hall, I would wear like a little green earring here and then a black earring and I'd wear like outfit. I would just be all dressy because this is when I was in sixth grade and I was experimenting. I would, I would cut my jeans and put leggings underneath and wear mismatched shoes. I was just very very co colorful and creative when I was in sixth grade and I remember when I went to the Kino Hall that one day my grandmother was like you need to take that earring out because it doesn't match or she was like she was just every little thing about me that made me different that made me who I was my grandmother would say like don't do this and don't do that or this is how this brother or sister would feel if you did that and it made me very self-conscious about who I was because I wasn't sure who I was you know I was just like I, if maybe maybe this isn't how Jehovah wants me to be maybe this isn't who I am because in the truth everyone's supposed to be this way and that way maybe I'm not who I really am maybe Jehovah's trying to show me through my grandmother who I really am and I mean I did appreciate being in the truth you know the religion I did appreciate avoiding bad situations in life that I could have had you know been horrible but I feel like a lot of who I was was stripped away from me was taken from me and I was forced to be someone who I wasn't and I was forced to put put away my, who I was to put on the new personality I was just very I was so much into the truth that I didn't have any I didn't do any secular activities I didn't do anything I didn't have a hobby that I loved and things that I like to do my life was the truth my life was the truth I lived it I breathed it I was living you know what I mean I just I lived the truth and I didn't have any activities or anything like that to do I didn't have a personality basically that's basically what that, that's basically what I'm trying to say I didn't have a personality of my own all I know was that I was friendly and everyone loved my smile and you know I, I gave good comments, and that's pretty much all that I remember being. I don't remember being who I am, who I am. And it's still hard now because I'm still trying to find out what I like and what I don't like and, you know, things that make me who I am because I don't know that anymore. And so I thought the best way to, the best way to start that out is by starting over and cutting my hair and... and 
discovering what I love again and finding things that I love. Like, I love soccer. I've always loved soccer. I love to sing. You know, <laughs> I, I love to cook. I love to make desserts. And I just, I didn't think that I could have the time to do all that when I was in the tree because I was living for the ministry school service, ministry school service, studying, studying, studying. I didn't have time to be who I was. I didn't have time to learn who I was. And so now I'm still learning my identity and learning what I, learning what I love, learning who I am. So bear with me, you guys. Thank you so much for being with me on this journey of self-discovery and self-love. I, I make videos about anything and everything because I'm still deciding on what exactly makes me me you know what makes my channel what makes what what <laughs> you know what makes me um yeah that's pretty much the video guys I really enjoyed making this video because I really tapped into some things that I didn't think I would tap into when I started this video at first it was just gonna be about my hair and how the sisters would treat me about my natural hair but it's really about self-discovery if you really think about it it's really about finding who you are after you left the cult and that's really what we're all xjw's or whatever religion you're in that you left it's really all about who we are after at the end of the day when we leave this we leave the religions and the cults behind like who are we <laughs> and so all right and so yeah thank you for joining me on this journey I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did watch it, don't forget to like it and comment down below what you guys think about it. What do you guys think about my new haircut? What do you think about self-discovering and learning who you are after you leave the cult? Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I just said, I hope you guys have a, a wonderful evening and I hope you have a beautiful morning. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. <laughs>